If you are here for building a theme cascade for downstream site building, you're in the right place. If not, you have some time to run away. Uh, my name is Oz Heller. I'm a software engineer at the Nerdery. Um, you can find me, email oheller at hotmail.com, LinkedIn, oheller, drupal.org, oheller, or the TC Midcamp or Drupal Slack, Oz Heller. So, first off, why what? So, like, the dream is, why would we want to build a custom upstream distribution or recipe? Like, what's the point? Well, ideally, we'll, from this, we'll be able to get 80% done. Like, you know, you hit the you run your setup, it happens, you're 80% there. Then all you need to do is 20% more. Hopefully a lot of that is theming. Otherwise, you know, there's all set up and all sorts of stuff. Well, for us, we have uh, created a custom upstream so that we're able to spin up these sites um, fairly easily. Uh, we're using Pantheon, this is what it'll look like. So our upstream, which has all of our modules, custom modules, theme, uh, will be deployed to our Pantheon dev site. And then from there, we will spin up new sites. And each of those new sites will have its own configuration, which will have its own private repo. So that can be managed and the upstream configuration doesn't actually influence any more the downstream sites. That's a manual process that you'll have to deploy. So um, this way when site one has all of its themes set up, all of the content, and then we add something like some new fields for site two through our upstream or to our upstream, it doesn't affect automatically site one, which could end up breaking things. So, uh, what's needed to set up our theme cascade? Well, we'll need our Drupal site. Uh, we'll need the color field. Uh, of course, taxonomy, uh, I've named it theme. Uh, we're using storage, or you could use paragraphs for your components. And then your content type of where you'll put all of your paragraphs or storage. Your basic page or your kitchen sink. And then we'll get into the custom theme with processors and then the CSS that will link it all together. Uh, Tailwind is the framework we're currently using. Uh, I won't get too far into that. That's a whole other session. Yes. Uh, that is certainly another session all unto itself. So what does this look like once we've done the initial setup? So here's the cascade flow. Um, first, we'll start with So we'll start with our component. Our component has a theme override field on it so that, hey, I want this to override the general page theme. But then I want this specific page to be themed. So I apply this field. But if I'm either I can, on a content level, say for this theme field, I'd like to use this as my default theme, or if you don't have any themes yet, the, something will be defined in the code so that you have your final fallback. Um, to get more complicated, uh, the theme override, so your card is a component which will hold media and that will have an override which then 
will be passed along and displayed on a, pa a paid, uh, themed page overriding that. So, lots of customization. You can drill down and or you can leave it and just let it be what you want it. Let it go from there uh, with a default. So, uh, parts. Uh, your theme will have your background. Uh, so your cascade parts are going to be background text buttons with background and text maybe even the border around the button focus hover states everything else that you feel like you want your uh, content editors to be able to manage um, and then where they're used pages components and custom blocks so now we'll get into an actual example. I know this is pretty small, but you can see how we have the primary theme or primary content. We have our background, text color, uh, form input text. Um, so under this tab, these are all of our main items. Then under our second tab, and this is up to your, how you'd like to organize it. Um, this could use a little better organization. It was at one point just a very long list. So, uh, it's <laughs> yes, it, it is a work in progress. Um, so this is when I go to a theme uh, content type this is what I see and then I use the color selector to either put in a hex value an RGB value or use the selector um, various um, browsers have nicer support than others digging into it here is our taxonomy theme setup so this pattern will repeat for all of those fields that were on that previous slide. So here, your field, have it called background, its color, we're using under the form, the background, color, HTML5, and then for the display, we're hiding the label and just dumping out the color text. Then, on the content type, so this, you know, your page, we have the page theme, uh, which references our vocabulary theme. Under the form, we make it a select list, so you can easily select what you'd like. And then the display, we're choosing to render it so that on the front end, you have all of those values. And you're able to also uh, put out the name of the theme with that, which will be important later. And finally, for the component, so your paragraph, storage entity, or yes, yeah, storage entity, all of those, your cards, accordions, um, will have this theme override field, which follows the exact same set up as before so this will give us access to those variables so now for our code <laughs> so uh here we this is uh where we're going to put all of our data um you can see that the uh, theme off-white we have our variables and our values and this is what the head root object looks like um, the main things that are interesting are we have our root which will handle um, 
components that aren't going to be themable like your header. You really don't want someone to be able to be like, I want my header to be this, this, and this on throughout the site, unless you really want them to. And then if that's the case, you would put that in the theme. Um, so here are some various colors. These are the, the data theme is the name of the theme, and then the small text is just the list of attributes um, that we saw here. So, um, getting to that point. So in our theme uh, file, or dot theme, we will uh, <coughs> get our storage, uh, you know, grab our taxonomy, load our theme tree, and then loop through. And uh, we'll, the interesting parts are uh, making sure that we have the, I, uh, the actual term, and then the name, and then, yes, that works. Um, then we're actually building our theme array, which we will return later. Um, so here's the name of that term. And then here are all the styles. With, so this is, for us, we're using Tailwind. So this is the um, CSS variable name. And then this is the value coming from the theme background, your field color. So that will loop through all of these, generating those values, and then produce them. So once, so in our hook preprocess HTML, um, We'll start at the bottom here. So here we're attaching in the head all of under styles, which we define here. Uh, we're adding my theme. So um, styles will be have the style, and then all of those data attributes, which then for each themes. So that long list of themes we have. For each of them, we're building it out, so and then renaming it so that we have our so it's in the proper format for processing. Then we're building our list and then finally attaching it to the head so that we end up with off white as our name, and then all of these attributes. Next, uh, so we now have all of our IDs, all, or all of our variables in the root. So that will be loaded on every page. Um, it's relatively small. Um, so, mm, most sites that I've seen have three or four variations, maybe five. So that doesn't get particularly long. But once that's defined, then you'll be able to access uh, which theme you'd like everything to reference. So um, again, starting at our endpoint. Uh, so here in our template, we have our data theme dynamic, and then attaching the attributes and classes like you normally do. But to get there, we are adding via the preprocess node and preprocess block, um, we're adding the variable dynamic, which is loaded there from our content, so we're using our term, exiting if it's empty, 
or actually we are returning empty which is the very default so it that's if there's nothing created you'll get empty and then you will have a set of defaults that will fall under that but then you have your term name and then that will end up being in your dynamic data theme so that's what you use to switch so we have covered the root we have covered the page and block now we're covering the components that go in the page so this is where you can override what you're looking for and this should look very similar um, the large difference here is okay we're if it's if we don't do anything it's going to be empty um, here we're looking for do we have a value if we do we'll return it if we don't then we will look at the node that that component is sitting on does that have a value if it does it will then take that over and if it doesn't we'll still end up with empty so again here is the flow we have our uh, process of theme get it to our into our variable then we render it on the page which will then tell your selectors hey use this block of selectors so as i alluded to previously there are some things that you don't necessarily want to change page to page like your header footer um pagers anything else you might not want them to control uh i should say that you don't want them to control on an instance by instance basis i would really like them to be able to set their own headers footers and all that colors and things because i don't want to have to theme it past what we're doing here so uh in our header we are providing more color links or color fields and but here we're actually building the form to add that into our theme settings um so we're defining our group that we'd like our items to be in and then we're defining the actual field itself and then setting the default value to that value should there be a value and finally uh, in our pre-process of the header uh, again we're attaching the root theme so we're generating these styles which will only be generated once and this goes at the top of our list of themes which should look familiar from previous where all of the other work went below this this goes above it so that you have that root value so it looks like this you have your root with all of your predefined things and then you have your theme are there any questions yes so i know you work at a really big agency i was trying to work there once actually <laughs> do you uh do you ever run into a situation where like a client has like a weird one-off change for like one page or something like how do you deal with with that kind of thing uh we let um if it is a one-off since you can make as many of these themes as you'd like 
just make another one and change that color and assign it and use it that once. Okay. Um, or if it being the... Let's see. This being important, if I'm adding just a field to, say, my site one, but no one else needs it, since I have the configuration here in just for that site, I will make the change there and push it up so that it has that configuration and no one else has to worry about it. Is this kind of like Drupal domains? Kind of? Not really, or not the way I understand Drupal domains, because this is, we're not actually changing sites or domains. This is just adding, using CSS variables, adding all of your colors to the top so that you can change them later. If I recall, domains is more on DNS handling and... Yeah, but you could do sub-themes so you could grab like all your CSS and then you could just grab variables and um, change all your sub-themes out. Would you... The idea is once this is set up, a developer won't have to do it. Where So there isn't a sub-theme. Um, yes? Yeah. So in this setup, when you're editing a node, you've sort of tabbed out, I'm guessing, content versus appearance so that there's sort of there's a division between it or am I misunderstanding um they are together um let me see if I can yeah there we go <coughs> so here is a mock-up of what's going on um so we have these two Lovely pages. I am not a designer. I will. It's <laughs> <laughs> beautiful. That's good enough. Come on. <laughs> um. Yeah. So, so when you're editing the page itself, there's the content of the page, like dark space wizard. But then you also have a section that controls the appearance. Uh, correct. It, it is a single field. Um. Well, <laughs> no, admin. <laughs> so here we have our page theme set at the top. Yeah, I'm aware. <laughs> um, so let's. One caveat is for custom blocks, you will always want to set a theme because caching will cache the first block that was loaded. <laughs> so now we're, we're marauding around as light space wizards instead. Oh, except for our title, which does have the override. Oh, and we have this item also overwritten. So you can see that we have our, we have organized it so that our theme overrides for the components are at the bottom of the component and the page theme is at the top of our content types so that you have that differentiation. Like, oh, I want to set this. Do I need to set this or do I want it just to inherit what I have already set? Um. Follow-up question? Yes. Sorry, I, I'm no. hoping I'm not. I'm in a completely different world. I work, I work for a, a giant corporation, 
and I'm the only Drupal developer, mm -hmm. and uh, there are very few editors. So the idea of like getting ed editors control over the theme, like it's like seeing paper <laughs> on my brain. But I can see if you're at an agency, this makes a lot of sense. So sorry. Uh, background aside, do you ever find your clients? screwing up things like they're changing things to like green when all they really meant to do is like change the title of the page or something along those lines uh do i find that my editors are not skilled in crafting what they're trying to make yes and no <laughs> um they they look at things and will try it out and then be like, oh, wait, this isn't what I wanted and revert it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we also have different levels of editors. So our top level editors have access to our themes. Are you using the field permissions module then too? So that. No. Uh, we're just not letting them have taxonomy oh, I see. Okay. Uh, access. I mean, they can select the field, but they can't, or they can use the selector, but they can't actually edit taxonomy. So in here, our content editors would be able to access all of these options, but when our editor actually approaches the page, they are trapped with, do I want one of these three options. Um, so it then becomes a discussion of the brand team. What colors do we want on our palette? And it's up to them to pass that off, make them, and then you could have images that completely m don't mesh. And then you might have a future discussion between, hey, the, either you need to change the image or you need to change your theme, these colors. But this way it remains consistent throughout. Um, and our purpose was uh, our client who we built this for wanted to be able to spin up themes but did, or new sites but didn't want to have to have a developer really dealing with it. Like, this way, a brand team can be like, here are your styles. The content editors can be like, okay, I know how to set up my styles or set up my theme items. And then it's up to them to assign them. Thank you. Sure. I asked several questions. Always. No. Yeah. Uh, is it working with Drupal 10 and Drupal 11, right? Uh, yes. But how, because I saw you like on the second slide, you say zip, but you're on the taxonomy team module, right? Yeah. But that module only support Drupal 7, so how, how can you make it? Uh, I was pointing out that you would need to enable taxonomy via your core Drupal module and that you will be using the taxonomy and terms. So... Yeah, so... Because I tried it before, but it only looking for Drupal 7. I don't know. Um, I'm just saying... Uh, I was just referencing that you were going to be using this, that you needed this enabled the taxonomy which core provides. Uh, the only module Come on. The mouse is like try that. Oh what? Oh did I lose my slideshow? <laughs> I guess I did. I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> there we are, so...
So yes, uh, here, so the only, well, you'll need the contrib module color fields and then you'd need the contrib module storage entities or paragraphs. Uh, taxonomy is in core. Any other questions? What's that? The color field, what are the return options? Oh, um, let me. just about everything, doesn't it? I was like, I don't know that one, so. <laughs> yeah, it um, mainly gives you like hex. Is hex or I mean, you get RGBA or you uh, just I believe it's mainly hex, but we can investigate. Uh, that is based on your browser. Um, I just didn't know if it allowed for levels of opacity, like the, the alpha values. We had a designer's who loved everything that Oh, I'm in the wrong spot. Taxonomy. I just didn't know if it, if it even had that side. <laughs> like, you've seen this module. You are talking about. So, the format this is your output. You could do swatch, CSS declaration. I'm not exactly sure what all of these actually do, um, but then for the. RGB, but not RGB. Uh, so, yeah, we need another field for OpenSD. We can, make it, we can make it work. We can make it work. Clever. We could just make does a it, version of that module. Does it offer <laughs> alpha if you change like the field storage? Maybe. Uh, there is a op. Uh, the question is, does uh, the field color field offer alpha and or opacity? Ah, so it does record opacity, but the question is, how much effort do you want to get, like? power do you want to give your editors or team to pick their colors? <laughs> We'd limit who could do it. <laughs> but yes, this is an option. Are there any other questions? Uh, let me, we can dive into the code a little further. Uh, let me, <laughs> yep, and well, let's see if I can do this via GitHub. Yes, sweet. This isn't super colorful, but it is legible compared to being on a black background. Um, can I? Yes. So we have way more logic going on in here than I was trying to break it down and demonstrate the basic components that you would need. Um, here, we're actually also doing fonts, um, setting primary and secondary fonts, so our editors are able to be, uh, we're, they're limited to Google fonts, um, but if you have access to your fonts, you can make that uh, more robust if you wish. Um, So here are our defaults for our header. So this is all of our settings uh, from the theme field. Then we return that. And then this is where we begin processing each of our own terms and assigning them, looping through so that we end up with that 
um, array and that we will then return. Um, here we're able to uh, map these. So we're getting themes and fonts, which are returned from here, and then doing that mapping. The, so this is for the font processing. And attaching those, getting your Google font. So if you had some other place that you were doing fonts, you'd probably do that there. Um, So here we end up attaching everything, all of that. So this has the root and then the various remaining themes there. Um, then is it here? Farther down? Yeah. If you're using storage, this is the preprocess for that. Here's our empty. It is. This is the component that I showed earlier. Uh, Can you talk about that uh, storage entity module? What is that doing differently than like just an entity reference? Uh, so uh, storage entity is much like a paragraph. Uh, you're, it's fieldable. The large difference is that you're able to reference it multiple places. So a paragraph is owned by the node or entity that you attach it to, whereas storage entities, if I created, say, my slideshow and I wanted to have that exact same slideshow show up on six pages, I could just reference that one, which means that if I change that slideshow, it will change all of them. And if you change the theme on that, it'll also change the theme for all of them. Uh, one difficulty would be that slideshow would probably have the first cached theme associated with it if you didn't specifically add a theme to it, much like the blocks. Um, but if you're pretty simple on your implementation, then it's really helpful. Any other questions? How did you do the field? You were saying that you could do individual fields for certain customers. Like this is just all theme stuff, but then you were. Oh, uh, so I for what I would do is just through the UI create a new field. It's all there is no custom code for this. It's all using the UI. Right, but if it's just for one customer, what is that? Um, you're right, that would, you're right, all customers would end up with that new field for, because since this is a shared theme, they would all get this one. By default, no value would be assigned to that field in the theme so it wouldn't if they're not using that field it wouldn't show up for anyone you could make a module right and have the theme dependent on that module and the module when it's installed creates the fields for you yes um Right now we have much of this in our in a distribution, so it's all captured as config. So when we create a new, it, at some point I would like to transfer this into recipes so that each item 
has its own. It, it would each config, so it would install one. But at this, when I first started developing this, we were on ten dot one, uh, ten point one. So recipes wasn't quite where I needed it to be. Any other questions? When this is outputting the variables at the top, is it on any given node, is it outputting all the themes, or is it smart enough to put out just, besides root, the one theme of the node that you are on? Well, I know it was processing, but I guess I didn't read every line of code he had there. Yeah. <laughs> Let me uh, pull up my theme, and I will. I thought it was just the things I was grabbing, but yeah, <laughs> it's a lot. Well, I just mean like if you're gonna end up with 40 themes, are you now gonna have like 40 yes. sets of variables inside every page? That's or a lot. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Come on, <laughs> inspect. Maybe. Where's your inspect? <laughs> oh, but it's for some reason over here, not. Go. There we are. <laughs> So, in our head, in our style, yes, we, so here is our light, here is our dark, well, uh, dark somewhere in there, root, I just lost, the, so here's our light data theme, here's Quetzalcoatl, Okay. So, yes, uh, if you had 40 distinct themes, they'd all show up there. Uh, ideally, you would not need 40 variations right, yeah. for one site, but it's possible, and a, you don't need a developer to do it. That is, That was the main requirement we had. <laughs> It means don't go crazy and create like a variable for like 500 things. Well, I mean, if you could get as creative with it as you would like, but I, keep I like in mind. you limited it to colors and not how much padding do you want for this thing? How much margin do you want for this thing? Oh. What, what oh, weight do you want for this? Like, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, I see. Don't go crazy because you could end up with. For sure. You, more than you bargained for. <laughs> the uh, other, uh, yes, by continuing to add everything that you may want to tweak on here, you would end up for a nightmare for your content editors to fill that all out. I mean, your editor would just then need to select which one until they wanted to get deeper. <laughs> all right. Well, that was a, that was a good one. thank you, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>